Hey gang, it's Mike from Power BI Tips. I had an interesting challenge come up recently where we wanted to build a y-axis with two different variables. So let me show you what I mean. Open up a file here. Here we have a simple chart. It's a line chart and it has values uh, for a total extended price across this chart in one line at chart axis. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to add a second axis to this chart that had a percentage but percentages compared to a total extended price of, in this case, 66,000, was going to be very small. So it kind of looked like this. So I open up this area here. And then I add in our percent change year over year to our chart. We quickly notice that the scale becomes incredibly off. So we weren't able to look for any correlations between the two lines together over time. So the idea here is to fix this and to try to figure out how we can make a chart with two axes. By default, Power BI does not give you this ability unless you're using a bar chart and a line chart combination where the bars can have one height and the line can have a separate height. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to build a custom visual with this and we will build a custom visual off of charts.powerbi.tips. First thing I'll do is I'll go over here to this duplicate page. We'll turn our chart type to a table. And by doing this, we're able to see these extended price totals and the year over year total as well. We can then click the ellipsis on this visual, export the data, and we will export it as a CSV file to our desktop. Once we do that, we'll be able to have a data file that'll show up on our desktop. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to charts.powerbi.tips. So this is the website. This is uh, based off of the version from Microsoft, the Charticulator project. And so this is just a code uh, base that we use here at uh, Power BI Tips. So I'm going to modify this chart type here. I'm going to get rid of the demo by clicking delete. I can adjust some of these uh, scale limits here on the upper or the lower end of the chart. And if I click in here, if you see my cursor, it's hovering. It's showing me there's a large plot area here. So what we're going to do is we're going to click in that area and we're going to adjust this plot area over to something a bit smaller. Now also notice there's two green dots here. This means it's locked into these two guides on the page. I don't really want to do that, so I'm going to actually adjust it up a bit higher. Now something I'm going to do here is a technique I use is to block off sections of the document to give me like some spacing for different visual elements. So for this case, I'm grabbing a glyph, a mark, I'm adding that to the page. And then we're going to adjust the height of this to just maybe be 20. So this is, you'll see in the, when we get to the end of this why we're using this visual distinction. Okay, so back over to our area here. I'll click in the white space and click our plot area. And then we'll drag this green corner down here to the, to the edge here across our new mark on the main page. So all that does is this spacing here adds a little bit of height differentiation between what we'll be plotting and what we'll want on the x-axis of our charts. All right, next we need our data from the Power BI file. So we'll go click the exchange data or replace our data. We'll click on the data.csv file, hit open, and we'll now have a new data set here. So this is the data set that came from the table format that was already in Power BI. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our extended price total. We'll add that to our y-axis of our chart. It'll automatically populate a scale based on the values that it sees. Then we'll add a symbol and we'll add that to our glyph area. And you'll see here that all the dots are in a line right now. So now we need to add our month to the axis, the x-axis. So adding the month to the x-axis and you can see your dots populate here. You can see there is some values in the x-axis. So I will move my shape one here to above the plot segment so we can see what's going on. What we added here is we added the initials of each month to the x-axis. This will be important. We're going to need to do this twice so we can then have these dots align for both the extended price and the percent change year over year. Next, we'll hit the links button. This will provide links between the data elements. And so we're only going to draw a line and it'll go between each of the dots. So we'll hit create links and now we'll have dots. Something else I like to do here, especially if we're talking with two different Y axis charts, um, I really have a preference around coloring these things to match and make sense so that the the axis that you're looking at also matches the data points in color. So let's adjust some of those. We're going to change our link segment here to a maybe like this uh, darker blue. Um, and then we'll do the same for the dots as well. So we'll click on the symbol 
and we'll adjust the dots to be that darker blue color as well so that we have a clear distinction that those two items belong together. Next we'll go over to the plot segment and then we'll scroll down here until we find the y-axis. We will click the ellipsis for the visible option which will allow us to change the color. So we can change the color again to these darker blue colors. So I'm going to just adjust those as well. So now we know that this axis, this y-axis, belongs to this colored blue line. Kind of brings a correlation between the colors there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add another glyph. This will allow us to make an entirely separate new plot segment. So adding a new glyph here requires we add a new plot segment. I'm going to go to the 2D region plot segment, add that to the other right-hand side of the page. Same concept, but this time we will use the percent change year over year. Add that to our chart. We'll again add our month to the x-axis, so we have the same scale at the bottom of each of the charts. We'll then be able to add our symbol of a circle to the glyph area. Again, we will plot our dots. Next, we want to add our links, clicking the link button. Now this time it gives me both plot segments, plot segment one and two. We're only interested in making links in the new plot segment, so plot segment two. So click plot segment two and then create links. And then we'll be able to draw lines between each of our dots. Next, we're gonna do the styling. So we're gonna change our link two to maybe this orangey color. And then we'll do the same for the symbol as well as the axis. So going down to the symbol two, We'll adjust this color also to this orange color. And then we'll move back up to our plot segment. And now we will adjust the y-axis here. Now another option we're going to set here in addition to the colors, set these both to orange, is we will actually flip the direction of them. So by default, it's on the left-hand side. If we flip the position of this, this will put the axis on the right-hand side of the chart. So now that we have these two segments, now we need the dots to line up. So we want the July data point to match the percent change of the same July data point as well on the other chart. So now we're going to grab one of the charts and grab the green dots and extend them over across each other's segments. This will then put the two lines on top of each other, and now we'll see we have all the dots. Now, note here, we only have January, uh, February, or January through June we do not have any data, but July through December we do. Now what's happening here in Charticulator, or the charts program, it's only picking up data from here from July to December, but it knows this is a month date and it's extrapolating January through June initially on the chart types. When we move back over to Power BI, these will not be there because of the way the data is being filtered to the visual. All right, next thing, let's get rid of these axes in the gray area and let's adjust this a bit further. So now I'm gonna go back to the plot segment one. In the X category, we will turn off the visibility and we'll do the same thing for plot segment two. We'll go up to the X section and turn off that visibility as well. So now we will add yet a third glyph. And on this one, we'll add a linear or a line plot segment across the bottom here. We'll start at the left-hand side and go to the right. This time we'll add the text box to this. And now we'll add the month indicator to that text box. So now we're able to see June, July, August, September through December. Now you'll know here that this does not align with the chart. So in order to fix that, we have to grab the month and add it to this data axis as well. So what this will do is it'll provide a full data axis across the entire bottom part of the chart, but July, August, September, and October will be only populated values based on our data. On plot segment three, we can go down here and turn off the visibility of the axes. And now we have our June, July, August, September data only aligning to where the data points are populated. All right, we're pretty much done here. Let's turn off the shape because we don't need this anymore. This adds a nice little trim white border between the bottom axis and the side axis here. And if we want, we can also adjust this further so we can go back to our shape. If you wanted to adjust that or make that gap a bit narrower, we can then adjust that. So if I change this from the height of 20 to height of 10, we can bring those numbers a bit closer to the bottom bar. I prefer it to be around 15, so we'll adjust it back there a little bit. I want a little bit of spacing between those visual elements. All right, next we can export it. We'll click on this button up here in the gray bar called Export. It'll then ask us to export a Power BI visual. We won't change anything here because this is the data we'll be using. Uh, you will have to name it your visual. You, you can uh, leave it the same the way it is, or you can adjust the name. The thing to note here is you want to make sure there are no spaces in this name. Click Power BI Custom Visual at the bottom of the, of the chart, 
and then it will package up our visual and download it for us. So we've just made our custom visual pre-packaged and ready to be loaded into Power BI Desktop. Moving over to Power BI Desktop, we'll go in here, we'll click the ellipsis, we'll import from file, and we'll go get our new My Visual Viz. We'll hit open. And let me know that's successfully updated, and this is my new visual here at the end. Now what I'll do is I'll highlight my table, and then I'll click the new My Visual. Now it won't populate everything yet because we have to adjust the data properties here. So the granularity is how detailed do I want this data to be? So we've been talking about month levels so far. So I want all of our data to be aggregated to the month level. So I'll leave this order date hierarchy the way it is. The extended price and price change year over year are actually in the wrong place. So I will remove those and put them in the correct locations on the custom visual. And now we need to add the month granularity for the x-axis. So we'll open up order date, open up the hierarchy, grab month, and put the month in here as well. And there we go. So now we have across the x-axis, we have our months as portrayed. And now we have our data points on the left-hand side. We have extended price. And the right-hand side, we have percentages or percent changes year over year. So I could add labels in here if I wanted additionally. But now I get a nice clean chart where I can then graph two different y-axes, and then I can even color them so that the data points match the axes. And then we can clearly see which line items here will match the axis based on color. All right, I hope you like this visual tutorial today. We just did a dual axis y chart with two lines and colored differently based on the axis scale. Hope you enjoyed this, and please like and subscribe for more videos like this from Power BI Tips.